The Whips have agreed that the following matters will be brought forth in report number one. Paragraph 16, promotion of aspiration and improved life chances. And paragraph 7, Kimber Road and York Gardens Adventure Playgrounds. Executive report number one, finance and corporate resources OSC. I now call on Councillor Senior to move paragraph 16. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. If I can formally move uh, paragraph 16 and open the debate. And I hope perhaps we can move away from uh, what many people would have characterised as a slightly inward-looking debate over the last topic to a matter which I do genuinely hope will eventually bring some real transformative effects on many parts of our borough. Because I think it's important to recognise and accept that here in Wandsworth, we don't just rest on our laurels. We do try to continually improve. And if we do realise that there are issues and problems to be dealt with, then we address those problems, even if they are new problems or problems of long standing. Uh, but perhaps I could just concentrate on three particular aspects of this particular paper. The first is how we've got the money for it. And of course, in adopting paragraph 17 a few minutes ago, we actually agreed unanimously without a great deal of debate, for a huge programme of council borrowing. I personally, and I'm a great fan, generally speaking, of borrowing. I believe that too much borrowing and too much lending is the reality, and too much spending is what has got the British economy into its current problems. But there are often uh, cases in which it is appropriate, and this is one. The first, of course, is to fund the buyout of the ridiculous neg negative subsidy uh, arrangements on a housing rent. And if Councillor Cooper is so genuinely concerned about uh, the levels of council rent that we charge, she may well ask why it is that 25% of the rents are currently paid over to underperforming and generally useless labour authorities. And so we're having to, to borrow considerable sums of money to buy ourselves out of that obligation. Thankfully, the government is making uh, finance available for that at a pretty cheap rate. And they're also making uh, money available for other purposes. So the first time in very many years this council is seeking authority not just to borrow to pay off the housing subsidy but also to fund some truly substantial estate improvements. We already have estate improvements planned uh, on the Wynn Stanley estate, improvements which have been discussed with local residents and generally favourably received. We've already discussed various improvements uh, for Roehampton as well. But this sort of money enables us to do something a lot bigger a lot more dramatic, a lot more transformative. Now, there's been reference tonight about how long various councillors have served on this council. These uh, schemes are going to keep us all busy for a very many years, and they'll be quite difficult and complicated to do. I do think there is uh, reason to hope that at the end of that, we'll have achieved some quite dramatic effects you know, on these areas. But that is not to say, and this is the second point I'd like to stress, is this is not just uh, about housing schemes in Roehampton and in Latchmere. It does not mean that we will, not, that we will stop uh, our existing works. Our existing 30-year housing capital programme continues, a programme underpinned by uh, site disposals and by setting a sensible level of rent. So that means that we can continue with all the other schemes we have throughout the borough, in Tooting, in other parts of Battersea, in other parts of Putney, for whether it is for um, uh, lift renewals or, in, or environmental improvements of other sorts. And indeed, I hope that we will be able uh, to boost those schemes over the next years by continuing with our sensible policy of disposing of unwanted capital assets, again, to improve uh, the conditions in which so many people in the borough uh, live. And we already know uh, that we have met the government's uh, housing standards early, but that is no reason not to move beyond that and to get even better than that. But the third and most important thing in a way to stress is this paper is not just about bricks and mortar. It is about so many other things. And that is why there's a whole list of proposals to go beyond not just the bricks and mortar of things, but to improve people's life chances in so many other different ways. We had a very useful and constructive debate at the OSC meeting where several non-members of the OSC came along and contributed to, to the discussion as well. I very much hope that we can take these proposals forward in a similar vein and that over the next few years we will see the changes that we all wish to see. Thank you, Councillor Senior. Councillor Belton? Ten minutes or? Yeah, right. Um, 
Madam, uh, um, this is a genuinely exciting and uh, uh, good subject we're talking about, a genuinely exciting debate, I hope, unlike uh, the nonsense of spoken by Councillor Morritt a few minutes ago, or indeed the council tax debate this evening. Not the particular this evening, the council tax debates for many years have been fairly ludicrous. But this is really interesting and probably the biggest decision made by the council in many a long year. It's actually two decisions, let me point out, for those who may not have read it in detail. It's about a, a potential 100 million that the council is going to spend on bricks and mortar, as Councillor Senior said, and other things. And also a grant of relatively small sum, but a very important one million pound from the big lottery trust devoted to a section of Latchmere, almost entirely Latchmere, but it also including a bit of St. Mary Park. I do think it's exciting. I think the majority parties ought to be congratulated. But I'm going to say a slightly unpopular thing first. First of all, and that is that uh, uh, the most ludicrous comment made at the, the interesting debate at the OSC was the leader's comment that it was <laughs> despite the riots, not because of them. And before you all protest, apart from the coincidence of the timing, apart from the chief executive's reference to the riots, apart from the evidence from Mr. Kingham, apart from the evidence of the people he took the evidence from, apart from the mention in the report of some aspects of the nearby states, apart from all these things, his comment, I'm afraid, actually detract, did neither him nor his party any favours. Because I've got to say, it's in part of the honourable tradition of the Tory party to be pragmatic and not ideological. They always boasted it, and they should take credit for it when it applies. Only two years after the Great Reform Act, Sir Robert Peel was doing his Tamworth Manifesto, saying it was all right after all. That great hero of the Tory party, Benjamin Disraeli, famously and cheekily dished the Whigs. Uh, Rab Butler in 1945 got on with the post-war uh, settlement. They are very good at adapting. And equally, Sir Paul Beresford, for those of you who remember, invested a very large sum of money, about 10 million in the Doddington, and immediately after some unfortunate troubles in that particular state as well. So don't let's pretend it's not related to. But aside from that, it's exciting in a number of other ways. One of the, apart from the sheer size, one of the interesting things about it is its Tory recognition of the importance of the state, in a sense, and the importance of state investment. There is no nonsense in this paper about having market-driven solutions or how the private sector will step in to fill up the gap. It is a clear statement by this council that the private sector hasn't been able to do it, and the public sector can. And it's also a clear statement that the public sector is prepared to take part of in regeneration of the economy, something perhaps Mr. Councillor Govindia should teach his uh, seniors, if not betters, in national government. So I congratulate him for taking this step. It's a bold one, and uh, he deserves to be supported. A moment ago, I said it was council-driven, and of course, it's not totally council-driven, because in an obvious sense, it is also very much something for the local community. And I spoke at some length in the committee about uh, the involvement of the com community, and Mr. Evans, the housing director, so I shouldn't quote names, or, or, but I'm sure it's okay in this case, uh, acknowledged that the local community and the local members would be very much involved in any plans being brought forward. And I speak from some experience because uh, I took part, along with Councillor Johnson, um, in the refurbishment um, of St. James's Grove Estate, where the residents, and uh, I th like to think the two of us and the housing officers did much to make that a great success. And if uh, Councillor Govindia can't think of what to do with Councillor Johnson, um, and Councillor Senior is too busy, I'd be happy to have Councillor Johnson back as a member of a working party because he really threw himself into it, and uh, I'd be happy for him to be doing the same uh, in uh, Latchmere. 
<laughs> no, no, I mean that genuinely, Councillor Nurse. Um, but um, I rather suspect, indeed, of all the things I've done in the Council over many years, um, it's probably uh, my proudest involvement. I wouldn't say my achievement, because it wasn't me. It was uh, the officers and the residents and Johnson and everyone else. But it's the one that I look back on with as much satisfaction as any. And I hope that uh, what happens over the next goodness knows how many years, I wonder whether I'll be around to see the end of it, who knows. Um, I, I hope that this one may surpass it. But I'm perhaps slightly at danger of overstating the physical dimensions of these programs, uh, as uh, Councillor Senior mentioned, because the revenue side of it talks about focusing resources on the troubled families. Uh, interesting issues about troubled families, uh, who seems to be a de facto about 50 uh, difference between the government and ourselves about the number of troubled families there are in the borough, but I'm sure we'll sort that out and uh, we'll learn valuable things about it. But about troubled families, support for community bodies, help with skills and jobs desperately needed both in Roehampton and in Latchmere, uh, help with supporting the elderly, particularly needed in Roehampton, I understand. Health, uh, help on health outcomes, which where Latchmere is certainly the worst in the borough. And the use of that one million pound lottery money to reinvigorate the community is going to be an interesting one for me and my two ward colleagues, Councillor Hogg and Councillor Speck, because it's quite clear that the Lottery Trust, who I've been in touch with, want the initiatives to come from the local communities and from, uh, from local councillors. So that will be interesting. Um, I, I suspect also that one of the St Mary Park councillors, uh, I don't know how they chop it up, but the one with responsibility for Badrick Court needs to be involved in that as well. And we're certainly welcome being involved with him. But it brings to me my final po point, um, which I don't, want to, I don't want to get wrong. My final point uh, is a modern theme, a modern mode, that if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. I don't actually believe that. I think it's far too simplistic. But I do think somehow or other we've got to define some form of success criteria uh, for Latchmere and Roehampton and this investment. I think it's quite important that the members and the community uh, and senior officers agree what those success criteria are, because I think it would be all too easy to throw money into the pot of re improving council estates, as indeed we have for many, many years, and not see any substantial change. It would be a great shame if in 10 years' time we've discovered we've spent half this money and can't actually see the real change. So I look forward to Mr. Martin, I hope, bringing forward views about what the success criteria might be and how actually we, we should assess that. But, Madam Mayor, I can't emphasize enough what an exciting opportunity it is. And frankly, congratulations to uh, uh, the leader and the majority party for bringing it forward. It's a bold initiative, and I'm about to say I welcome it. Thank you, Councillor Belton. I'm sure if you take after your late father, you will be with us for many, many years to come. <laughs> Sammy, oh, I mean, just, just as a matter of personal interest, uh, next week I'm uh, visiting my 102 year old aunt, seems to run in the family. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I think you will be here to see it completed. Um, Councillor Ellis. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, in, in his uh, speech, Councillor Belton referred to different uh, parts of uh, different eras of history. Uh, and I'd like to just sort of concentrate a little bit on the 60s and the 70s because I think they're remembered with uh, you know, some fondness by a, a number of people, not me, of course, because I'm far too young. Um, but certainly during those times, there was great advantage, uh, advances in the, in the field of the performing arts and uh, science and, 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 and uh, medicine. Uh, but one of the things that I think that the, that particular period didn't exactly cover itself in, in glory, and I hope we will all agree with this, was actually the field of architecture. 
um, uh, our country, uh, most of our towns and cities. Excuse me, Madam Mayor. I, I, think, I think we're trying to encourage interventions in a friendly kind of way. Um, can I just say, because it's all often repeated, and I was around in the 70s, about the biggest thing we built in the 70s was Burtop Road. It had all been started in the 60s. The 70s just doesn't have any of these tower blocks at all. Look it up in the records. I, I stand corrected by uh, Councillor Belton that the 60s was probably one of the greatest eras. However, uh, in the field of architecture, I think it hardly covered itself in glory. Um, uh, sadly, most towns and cities uh, are, are scarred with uh, some fairly uh, monstrous uh, developments, uh, which have one thing in common in that they're, uh, generally speaking, badly designed and in many cases were also badly built. And unfortunately, we also have some of those ourselves. As Councillor Senior said, um, we are taking advantage of a comparatively low interest rate to uh, invest probably the greatest amount of investment we've uh, I I put in our housing for many, many years, uh, indeed if ever. Um, and the important thing, of course, as Councillor Belton very rightly said, is of course we've got to make sure we get this right. And in order to do that, I think it is very, very important that we avoid some of the mistakes that were made uh, in, in that particular time uh, when some of these estates were built. Uh, first of all, we must avoid thinking that we know what is best, uh, when in fact actually the people that know what is best are the, uh, the current residents of those areas and, and those who we hope will also be the future residents. And so there will definitely be a wide uh, consultation of people um, we will certainly be spending the next few months uh, drawing up a master plan for the area which will then go to consultation uh, and we very much welcome uh, support from, uh, from all uh, councillors and in particular the councillors for the wards uh, concerned. Uh, that will be very valuable indeed um, and we must also make sure that the estates are uh, better designed. Um, we've spent considerable amounts of money uh, over the years uh, blocking up uh, alleyways and roads that don't go anywhere. Uh, we really must ensure that uh, we, we don't make all these mistakes that have been in the, in the past. And I think the greatest measure of success that we can uh, have from this, and I really do hope that this will be a very successful project, uh, is that we will actually be designing and building house, uh, houses and flats that people aspire to live in, want to live in, and most importantly, Madam Mayor, are proud to live in. Thank you, Councillor Ellis. Councillor Mills? Mills. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We are where we are, and if I refer to the Kingham report, uh, there was a very interesting sentence in there that said that the physical environment in which people live is how they view their community. Well, I'm afraid that August the 8th last year can only be regarded as a massive vote of no confidence in their community. The physical environment in which people live needs addressing, be it on the Winstanley Estate or in Roehampton. And Councillor Belton is absolutely right to say that these are exciting proposals. But he's wrong to say that this is a result of the riots because I can quite categorically state, as everyone knows, that there were no riots whatsoever in Roehampton. I understand the point of view uh, of the perpetrators going from Roehampton. They may well have done, but they didn't trash their own backyard, is the point I'm, I'm making. And also, has been, as has been said this evening, um, the housing revenue account subsidy system, that discredited system that uh, members opposite also believed was a bad system, saw tenants in Wandsworth having to pay £1,000 a year of their own rents straight to the government in, in the negative subsidy system. How outrageous was that, that some of the most deprived people in our borough were paying £1,000 a year to the government. The system had to go, and I'm glad that it is going. I'm also glad of the fact that in Wandsworth we have a history of not borrowing money, because money has to be paid back with interest. But we've got to get out, get out of this HRA system and we've actually got a once-in-a-lifetime chance to borrow some money cheaply. We've also got this once-in-a-lifetime chance to borrow the headroom of £100 million. And frankly, if we didn't borrow that money, the members opposite would be criticising us. Residents in the borough would probably be criticising us. So I think we have to go for it. 
we have to address the physical environment. And it's a sad reflection that the height of aspiration for many of our residents in this borough is that they want to see their children ending up getting a council flat. They don't care if the children are happy, if the children have a partner, if the children have a job, if they're rich, they just want the children to get a council flat. And we've already heard about the low levels of dep uh, the, the high levels of deprivation within the borough. Poor health, poor education, high criminality. Um, with this extra hundred million pounds that we're going to hopefully go for, we can improve aspiration by maybe providing new 21st century libraries in some of our most deprived communities, putting in new health centers maybe, maybe crashes, but trying to encourage people to learn, to get out and work, and we'll provide the health care, uh, the, the child care for them. But if we can get the private sector to come in and help us, hopefully we can do even more. I'm going to cut it short and just say that, as Councillor Belton has said, councillors will lead in the consultation. And I know for a fact that Councillor Nichols and I, because we've discussed it, have pledged that we will lead that consultation in Roehampton. I think we're all agreed in this chamber that it's a good idea to improve the state of our borough by going for this extra £100 million. Please, members, support this motion.